Hi, I'm Jackson. And I'm Nelson. We're from South Louisiana. You're watching Truck of Josh and Diesel on DJB. And as always, thanks for watching. Good morning everybody, another day is here. We're getting home today. So I'm up at the crack of dawn. We have what, seven hours, so more than that, seven, eight hours to go to just, just to get to the yard. Then we gotta go all the way home yet. So hopefully we can get home at a decent time today instead of like in the middle of the night like usual. I just fueled up my tanks here in Davidson, Saskatchewan. I don't know what this guy on my left is doing. You gonna park there, bud? Oh, you're parking there, okay. Good, then I'm getting out of here. Time to go home. Well, once I get home, like I said, this truck's gotta go into the shop, get that hood latch cable fixed. That'll be on Thursday, and Thursday I got an appointment in Winnipeg also. And I guess we'll be home till Sunday. Sunday we gotta continue with this load down towards Wisconsin. No, not Wisconsin, Minnesota. It's going to uh, a suburb of Minneapolis. And then from there, I'm not sure where I'm going yet, but I'm sure we'll figure that out either before the end of the week or first thing Monday morning. 100 meters, turn right on. Louis Rail Trail, Highway 11. Louis Rail Trail, eh? Is that what this is called? All right. So we're between Saskatoon and Regina in Saskatchewan. These are some interesting units that I haven't seen before. It's like a triple trailer, but it's a super B. Oh, I see they got two containers on the back one and one on the front. Okay, I thought it was three trailers. So it's like a super B. I don't know why they have to have the, the yellow light flashing. And I guess they're longer than usual. They probably have to have a permit then. This guy up here is the same. Oh, this guy's got four. Well, this guy's definitely longer. Look at this little road train. Oh, are you trying to be Australia or what? Look at this. Yeah, that's three trailers. trailers before here in Canada like that, that happens between especially on the prairies here but it sort of looked weird the way those containers were sitting on there though eh? they kind of looked like they're just any which way rolling past the refineries in Regina here this is where I believe they refine diesel fuel at least that's what I've always been told I've told you guys this a couple times before this place looks really cool at night it always sort of looks like a brightly lit Christmas building. <laughs> Except that it's only just one color, it's just those yellow lights. But it would be pretty cool if in the Christmas season if they changed all the lights to red and green. <laughs> uh, it would never work because those lights are there for safety, but yeah, this place just lights right up at night. Ooh, that's stinky today. Whew. The wind is blowing that exhaust right over the highway here. Oh yeah. Suck it in. Yeah, let's close the windows. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm pretty surprised actually that they have refineries like this like right in the city. I mean, if I lived next to a refinery like this, like it's, it's, it's a little ways away from the residential zones and whatnot, but I mean, that'd make me nauseous if I had to smell that all day, but I guess maybe you just get used to it. Cause I mean like people work there, right? Every day. Gotta get used to it after a while, but I remember uh, a couple of years ago uh, there was some kind of accident at a refinery around here, and I think there was a fire at another one, and it partially shut them down. Not fully, but I think they they were at reduced capacity or something for a while, and uh, 
the diesel fuel supply in Western Canada within a few days was almost depleted. There's tons of truck stops that had no fuel. And when they did get fuel, you could only buy a limited amount. It was just kind of freaky. <laughs> How quickly, like everything sort of comes to a halt. I think a lot of gas stations and fuel stations had to, uh, had to buy fuel from the US. So they're trucking fuel up from the US and that was more expensive, of course, so fuel prices went up and during a shortage, of course, they're gonna skyrocket the prices, right? It, it was nuts. But yeah, I think just two of our refineries were working. I think, I don't know how much of the capacity, I think it was like one, one third of their capacity was out. I don't know, someone else would know better, but. Yeah, it's amazing how much we rely on that stuff. I mean, it would be nice to move on to different energies. They keep talking about this, right? It's the big talk of the day now. We gotta start using different sources of energy. I understand, I agree with that, but man, do we got a long way to go. <laughs> we got a long way to go. Like trying to get around this roundabout here in Balgoni. <laughs> Continue on this road for eight kilometers. Well, first I gotta get on this road, man. Almost called you Mandy again. I wonder if that's ever gonna stop. I think she's gonna throw me out the window. Sorry, Karen. Yeah, those turnpikes, there's two 53 foot trailers behind a full unit, right? Or a full condo unit truck. And they put those roundabouts on an interchange right at a very popular Flying J truck stop. So there's always trucks going through there, right? And I've talked about this before. You guys know how I feel about roundabouts. Continue uh, on this road for 528 kilometers. Thanks, Karen. I'm starting to be a little more accepting of them. Like, I know why they do it. I know that it saves fuel economy. It's uh, better for your whole vehicle. Like, you don't have to stop and go. Uh, it's proven to have less emissions than all the vehicles stopping at a stop sign and starting again. And it also saves your brakes. I, I, I get it. It's just some intersections, it, it doesn't work as well. It's not as convenient, but. What's going on here? Construction? No way. Construction? No. You don't say. We're almost at the end of construction season, at least. So that's, that's good news. You gotta be careful in Saskatchewan going through construction zones. Uh, every construction zone, whether there's workers there or not, like you can see here, 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour, uh, fines are tripled and they're serious about it. They will patrol these areas. In every construction zone, if there's orange cones, it's 60 kilometers an hour. If there's anybody on the side of the road with flashing lights, like emergency workers, or uh, I guess that was it. Okay, that was the construction, okay. There's uh, emergency workers or police or tow trucks on the side of the road uh, with their lights flashing. You have to slow down to 60 kilometers an hour and move over or they'll come after you. They just posted signs like that in Manitoba recently as well. They want people to start slowing down for emergency vehicles and uh, tow trucks. time because there's been a lot of accidents and I can understand why they would make that law like, any of you who have broken down on the side of a highway before or had a flat tire and you're parked on the shoulder even if you got your triangles out your reflectors out you got some ambers flashing or something to warn people that you're stopped there they still don't slow down don't move over even though there's no one beside them they're the only people on the highway and they'll just rip right past you like inches from your vehicle and you're just thinking like for those people like you well, why not just move over why not right what's the reason i can understand when it's like heavy traffic and you can't move over but then at least slow down I mean, common sense it's sometimes tough when you're hauling a heavy load and someone's broke down like right around a corner and they're sort of in that blind spot around the corner and you don't see them to the last minute and there's like vehicles all around you. It, it's tough to, sometimes it catches you off guard. I get it, but you just gotta pay attention, I guess. Is there laws like that in the US too? Like, I know everybody moves over in the US, mostly everybody, a lot of people do, a lot of people don't. But here you'll actually get a huge fine if you don't. 
Is it like that in the US too? I mean, I'm not gonna test it, but I'm assuming that if you don't move over for a police officer or a tow truck driver, that you can get a fine. I don't know, I've never heard of that. I never, I never see signs like that posted in the US, at least not very often. But I'm just assuming that that's the law, right? I mean, ignorance is no excuse, so if, if you're gonna fly past them and you're like, oh, I never knew it was the law, well, you know, common sense, buddy. I don't know. Interesting clouds, eh? <laughs> looks like it might be a little bit rainy at home. But it also looks like it might be sunshiny. You never know, a little bit of both. Rolling into Headingley, Manitoba here, just west of the city of Winnipeg. Once again, we're just gonna stop, grab some fuel, fill up the DEF, because I couldn't fill that up this morning. There was no DEF in Davidson. And then we'll uh, meander our way around Winnipeg, drop our trailer off, and this truck's gotta get to the shop. Because uh, that hood release cable has gotta get replaced. And there's no way I'm spending an entire day trying to figure that out while I break everything. <laughs> I'm not, I know I can do it, but I got a lot of other things I need to get done too. I got a doctor's appointment, I got stuff, stuff to do, you know? Couch sitting barbecuing, important stuff, you know. Plus, I'm not a rocket scientist, so I don't think I'm qualified to work on a Volvo. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. It is pretty tricky. And I know uh, like a licensed mechanic or an experienced mechanic, I'll say that, could probably get it done pretty quickly, but I, I couldn't, no, nope. Oh, oh, oh. I need a new seat in here. This one's like a little bit messed up. <laughs> so let's fill ourselves up with that sweet, sweet go-go juice. Oh, and you got pumps open for me too. Nice. I'm gonna take the very last one. The highlighted route. Does the highlighted route include fueling? That's where I'm going. It's really windy outside. It's been kind of nice for me on this trip. It's been pushing me all the way back home. I've just been flying. Okay, let's get this done. Let's tell everybody that, hey, I'm here. I am not driving anymore. I am now fueling and I'll do a load check as well. Uh, it's so windy outside, it's crazy. I'm excited to go home though. How about you, Diesel? You excited to go home? Putting on such a good act right now, he's really excited. He's been like, impatiently dancing and whining all day because he knows where we're going. Oh, home sweet home. Got no trailer behind us now, just bobtailing. Gotta bring this truck into the shop tomorrow morning. One good thing about the shop there, at least last time, I don't know if they'll do it every time. Maybe it was just a one-time thing because they like me. Uh, last time they washed my truck for me when they were done. So that was cool. Kind of hope they do that again, but if they don't, I won't be mad. I'll just be sad because my truck needs a wash. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take too long. I mean, it's just that cable and they know what they're doing. They'll probably have it done by the end of the day. But they got tomorrow on Friday and Saturday. I only got to leave Sunday, so I already got all my paperwork. I'm all set and ready, cleared at the border. All I got to do is show up with my pretty face, say, hey, I'm here to visit again. 
brakes, the brakes are always so sharp when I don't have a trailer on me. I'm used to having like 45,000 pounds pushing me, right? Now it's nothing. So the brakes are always really sharp, easy to lock up the tires. So uh, I'm already all cleared at the border with my load and uh, all set and ready to go. They're waiting for me at the border. I'll be crossing on Sunday. All I gotta do is show up with my pretty face and smile and give them my identification and promise to be extra super really good. Why do people do that? Why do you open your doors into traffic with a semi coming past? That's a Steinbeck thing. You know, we have parking along here, uh, all along Main Street, right? And almost every time people just swing their doors wide open into traffic, don't even look, just step right out, right in front of you. That's why I usually try to stay in this left lane going through town as much as possible because it happens every time. I just had construction back there forcing me in the right lane. But one of these times, I hope it's not going to happen to me, but one of these times someone's going to get clipped pretty bad. Here he comes. Here he comes. Womp, womp. Womp. Poor guy only has half a motor. I can laugh at him though because I used to be that guy when I was a teenager, when I first got my license, I was 16. Till I was probably in my low 20s. I was a tuner guy. I liked those little import cars. And I mean, I wasn't as cool as that even though I had a, a, a Cavalier, but at least it was a Chevy. <laughs> oh, I had the fart can on it and everything. You bet. Oh, you bet. Even lowered it. Oh boy. Yeah, I hate to admit that, but man, I was some cool stuff said no one ever who knew me. <laughs> and I'm Nelson. We're from South Louisiana. You're watching Trucker Josh and Diesel on DJB. And as always, thanks for watching.